we've been studying terrorism for for a long time or intelligence community military side of the house and from me looking in for as a person who has been studying this my whole life and reading about this my my whole life as well i had this this sense some of it enforced reinforced by popular culture but much of it from the pages of history the israeli army standing up to larger armies more technically advanced militaries um what they ha have done on the intelligence side of the house to keep iran from getting uh, a nuclear weapon um there was this this aura that the both the military and the intelligence services in israel had and uh there's uh let's say massage shin bet and um amam uh so it's like cia fbi and military intelligence uh essentially and they had this or a, not of invincibility, but a, I would say a mystique uh, about where they had people and where they were getting their intelligence, what they could accomplish. Um, that seems to have taken a big hit uh, on October 7th. The intelligence side of the house. Took a torpedo to the bow. Yeah. The, um, well, there's several factors. A, you're never as good as your hype. B, you're only as good as your last screw up. And the problem with Gaza was the same as the problem that existed in the West Bank during the Second Intifada that prompted the Israelis to go in in, um, in 2002 after the Passover massacre. And that is they didn't really have eyes and ears in the Gaza Strip that were reliable because it was a closed off um, piece of land. And it was very difficult for Israeli agents, Israeli intelligence to operate there. There was an operation that was um, revealed to the press when a very secret intelligence unit um, was compromised at a roadblock and uh, the commander um, was killed a, a few years back. Um, his identity is still secret. And it showed the difficulty of having reliable eyes and ears on target. And if you don't have that human eye to eye element and you rely on technology, um, you know, all of the bells and whistles of um, eavesdropping and signal intelligence and knowing what people are thinking because um, their phones are on, um, that has a danger because people could say whatever they want on the phone um, if they're not revealing themselves, if they're trying to um, fool you. But if you're sitting in a cafe somewhere in Gaza, looking at someone eye to eye, you can tell if he's lying or not. You can assess the situation. And the Israelis lack that. That was denied to them. Um, so they had to rely on other measures. And when you rely on technology and, and well, let's put it this way, every army in history that is hid behind a wall has been defeated. Hmm. Interesting. And the, the, the Israelis are no different. They hid behind fences and all sorts of technological means and balloons to monitor. And the Palestinians continuously tested it. They tested it with um, large demonstrations near the border to see how close they could go. Um, they tried it with all sorts of ways by throwing balloons over the fence to see if they could land and they could set fire to um, agricultural fields. So all these little probing actions on their own were just benign. But in the larger sense, they created a, an offensive intelligence picture for the Palestinians that gave them a very clear cut idea as to what's going on. Also, the Israelis tried to give the Palestinians slightly, a slightly better life by letting about 20,000 come and work in Israel. Well, a lot of them worked in the agricultural settlements that were targeted. So you had these people earning salaries who were eyes and ears on Israeli targets, and they provided intelligence. So it, that on its own was a perfect storm. You add the political chaos in Israel, where a government of a very right-wing government was, was elect or created a coalition a lot of the individuals in that coalition were um, inept, incapable, dishonest, and they were leading the country in a direction where the backbone of the country, people who served in the military, the defense element 
of the People's Army of the Citizenry were out in protest. We have to remember that in February, I believe, um, the Army Chief of Staff, um, himself an operator, former operator, wanted to speak to the Prime Minister, stating that the political disarray in the country, the judicial overhaul that Netanyahu's government was trying to pass, was weakening the defense establishment, and Netanyahu refused to see him. And when the defense minister, um, Yoav Gallant, wanted to see him and speak to him about the same thing, Gallant being a former commander of um, Flotilla 13, the Israeli naval seals, um, Netanyahu fired him. And, and that firing led to the massive protests every week. So if you have the government saying that the defense, the people in the defense hierarchy are left-wing traitors, and they can't be, or they shouldn't be believed. Um, it's going to be very hard for Intel to find its way forward up and to reach the decision makers. You know, there was a report that Israel's Channel 12 showed a couple of days ago, where they spoke to some um, young conscripts and female soldiers who worked in the observation towers opposite Gaza. And they've been reporting for weeks and months that there's unusual activity on the Palestinian side of the fence. And that material fell on deaf ears. So as, well, as you know, I'm, I'm not I'm not saying anything new to you, but as you know, if um, the people on the top aren't listening to the intel, intel is useless. I wonder if that's the same observation post I read about um, man, man, mostly by female soldiers uh, that were massacred fairly early on. Um, that didn't have the proper weapons to defend themselves, the proper security to defend themselves. I wonder if that's the same same group that was reporting on all. We'll find out in the, the months and, and years ahead, of course, as more uh, information becomes available. But uh, it's the, the same, if that's the same observation group, area, headquarters, Bob, whatever they call them over there, uh, that was reporting this unusual activity that got hit and got massacred um, because they didn't have the proper security in place. Uh, so it's heartbreaking. Yeah. Across well, the they weren't prepared to um, to handle 1,500, 2,000 terrorists. Yeah. Yeah.